Hello and welcome to the Gaming News Roundup. My name is Amata and I'm going to give you all the latest in gaming as of the 6th of May 2012. As usual, I'll start off with a smaller piece of news first, and that Kirby's Pinball Land will be heading to the 3DS, likely for the Virtual Console, of course. Now, as practically everyone knows, for very good reason, Kirby's Pinball Land is counted among many, many people's list of absolute old-school classics. So it'll, I'm sure it will please a lot of you to hear that it's been rated, and the rating stamp was dated May 2, so it's very likely that it will turn up on the 3DS eShop within the next few weeks. So yeah, that's uh, quite a nice bit of news. I'm sure a lot of people will be very happy to hear that it's coming to Virtual Console and be glad to have the opportunity to revisit this classic again. I don't have a 3DS yet myself, I'm planning to get one for the new Kingdom Hearts 3D. And I'll probably be taking a look at this as well, because, you know, we all like, enjoy a bit of nostalgia every now and again, and you can't really get much more nostalgic than this. Pretty much anyone and everyone is talking about the Avengers film at the, mo at the moment, as I'm sure you know. Everyone's raving about how awesome it is and all that, and I haven't seen it yet myself, but hopefully we'll be seeing it for too long. Anyway, it's kind of odd that as of yet, there hasn't been a movie tie-in game, because you know they love to do that, to rush out a game to with the release. Now, it seems that Ubisoft have taken up that calling. They've recently registered a domain name, AventuresOfBattleForEarth.com, which has sparked speculation that the publisher could be working on such a game with the title, which would obviously be Avengers Battle for Earth. Now, it was also registered by Marvel characters and is listed on Ubisoft servers, so it obviously links to the publisher to the deal. Now, if this is true, Ubisoft managed to keep a tight lid on this one. But that is a little bit of a concern, because if this was a proper full budget title, some whisper would have probably escaped by now, whether, you know, purposefully or not. So. It could be maybe a smaller budget, browser-based, or something like that. I, I hope not, because obviously, if they're doing an Avengers game, which it certainly looks like they did, I'm sure most people would prefer that they make it into a proper game rather than, say, like a Flash game or a Facebook game or whatever. I'm not really sure what's going on yet. As some people have pointed out, a big part budget title wouldn't be so easy to hide, so it is a little bit concerning that we've only just now seen about it when they've registered for this domain. So hopefully we'll get some more information about this soon. Personally, I hope that they actually take their time to make a proper movie tie-in game. You know, don't try and rush it out, because obviously the film's already out, there's no need to rush so much. It's going to sell well even if they release it, you know, a year down the line or whatever. It's an Avengers game. People are going to buy it. So that's what I hope personally, because as everyone knows, most movie tying games are pretty terrible, with the exception of a very, very few, such as GoldenEye, but with that one, they did take the time to make it properly, rather than trying to rush it out. So hopefully they do that, and don't go for a fast cash-in with a full-blown title, or even with a some sort of Flash game or Facebook game, because I'm sure that would annoy quite a lot of people who don't really have interest in such things, which is more than fair enough. I don't think I'll be very pleased myself, to be quite honest with you. So, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that one, and what you think this game is going to be, and what platform it's going to be released on. Now, as a final piece of news, the web-based social gaming platform Zanga has got itself 2.8 monthly active users. The firm itself has confirmed this. Now, Zonga launched its online-based platform in open beta form in March and has seen a very rapid growth since. The site has seen 1.7 million users in the month ending March, but that number has soared by over a million in April. At the time of doing this episode, the website showed 1.17 million concurrent players online, so as you can quite clearly see, Zangro are doing very, very well for themselves. And it's no surprise, you know, whether we like it or not, the rise of casual online games based on Facebook or Zangro or whatever cannot really be denied. And to be honest, we shouldn't fight against it too much because 
in a way it opens up the world of gaming to people who perhaps felt excluded from it before or perhaps would never even take an interest before and while some people are just bored housewives or whatever playing you know bejeweled or whatever on Facebook some people will find their way into the world of gaming find by finding a user-friendly you know casual browser-based game or you know Zanga or Facebook or whatever and having that suck them in to the world of gaming. So the rise of things like this is a good and a bad thing at the same time, obviously. It's not all rainbows and sunshine, but I do quite like that this is happening because, as I said, it will be putting people who, more into the world of gaming that perhaps wouldn't even have considered being in, involved. You know, some people play some simple browser-based thing or whatever and then, you know, want to try something more in-depth. So yeah, it's a fairly short roundup today. The news has been a bit thin on the ground recently, but um, if you're wondering about the Elder Scrolls Online, I did do a big video just on that just yesterday. So go and check it out on our channel. It's there for you to watch if you want to know all the information that's available at the moment. So yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe and do all that normal stuff, and I'll see you again soon.